Welcome back to Wood Acres. It's the end of April and we're going to take a stroll through the gardens. I guess we're not the only ones. Chickens, what are you doing in my garden? Hop out of there. You're not supposed to go past the rock wall. Dot, snowball, what are you doing in here? Come on, hop out, hop out. Beep beep, scoot it. Come on girl. I'm trying to have nice gardens here, chickens. Hop out, go. Good boy. Hey Bobtail, hop on out of there. What are you doing? Come on, scoochy scoochy. Oh, I actually just noticed here we have a bunch of sunflower volunteers popping up. I'm gonna need to move these around the property. I can't have them all pop up here. Earlier today, I was down in the vegetable garden trying to make some progress down there on the pumpkin patch and the squash mound. So we'll get down there and I'll show you what I got done. But over here in the island garden, even though I didn't get any weeding or mulching done, it's still starting to take shape here. The bright lime hostas are coming up. I don't know what their names are, but this one over here is the Empress Wu hosta. It's the largest. Good job, bud. It's the largest hosta in the world you can grow. I think it does have a variegated version I'd really like to get. But I have this one here and I think it's coming up on its third year. It did get a little affected by that frost we had the other day though. I have this one here in the island garden, but I also have one over in the front hosta bed. Right here we have the candy corn spirea putting on some nice color and underneath it you can see a volunteer columbine. We're really starting to get that to spread around here. I planted the one on this side of the pathway so it's starting to seed from there. But this purple periwinkle vine is looking gorgeous right now, especially around the bird bath. My brother just showed up. We're gonna have to take a break. All right, I'm back. Now, before we get to talking about the pond garden, I wanna show you the alien that's blooming over on the island. I'm pop. I think I said it before, we're coming into purple and yellow season. I really like the purple, so I have a lot of things that are purple. We have this bell hyacinth that is actually around the property in a lot of different gardens. We have a whole row of this out front, and we have a circle of this in the veggie garden. But I also have just singles of these plugged in around the gardens too, just so they're all blooming at the same time. So the hyacinth is purple, the periwinkle vine is purple, even the weeds over here are purple. We have viola popping up all over, and it's blooming right now. It's practically a ground cover at this point. But over on this side on the peninsula jutting out from the island, you can see the pom-poms of alien popping up. We're gonna have a few of these going across the peninsula. I think I also have white too, but they're a little bit smaller. The purple ones are bigger. And we also have the purple iris in full bloom right now. Up, up, don't destroy anything, buddy. Be nice. But right here we have a gorgeous shade of this iris and it's blooming earlier than almost any of the other irises. I think it did bloom first, but we also have the white iris down in the veggie garden blooming right now. A little hard to see with you in the way, Pop. Excuse me. But this is a gorgeous shade of purple. Now you can see the alien right here putting on color and another spot right here putting on color. We have a lot of different perennials all through the bank here. As the alien's starting to bloom, we also have all the irises starting to put on buds. Now there's a lot of irises around the property, so whenever it's iris season, we have a lot of colors to show you. So it's usually looking really good here during iris season. Echo Pup, this isn't purple, it doesn't belong. Oh, oh, thanks bud. So the columbine, it's also purple and it has the yellow accent if you look at the inside. Little bit of yellow in there. I am loving the purple already, but we have more coming with the irises here and here. Hi oh, Bonnie. There's a little bit more purple back here with the lilac blooming. I chopped this one way back, so it just has a little bit of blooms right now. I'm hoping it does a little bit better next year. But a few blooms are better than no blooms. What I say about this ball pup? Garden to garden. A port. In the food forest over here where I have all my berry bushes and some fruit trees, we do have some blooms here on the blueberry right there. Just starting to get a few blooms on these. Now I did plant five blueberries. They're just not doing very well. There's only three just barely hanging on, but I'm letting them grow. We'll see what they do. This is the bush I really want berries off of. This is the indigo hascap berry. And oh, look at that. There's a berry forming. That is exciting. I can see more actually starting and still in the green stage. I'm definitely gonna have to put bird netting on this. If the wild birds don't get it, my chickens definitely will. And that one's my favorite berry. Now my second favorite berry is blooming too. Here we have black currant and red currant. I believe I have one of each. I always get confused, but both of these bushes are currants and they're blooming beautifully right now. I've actually gotten pretty good harvest off of these already. It probably wouldn't hurt to prune them up a little bit into a better shape, but they're already blooming, so I'm letting them go. 
But here in the US, we don't have a lot of options commercially for currants. So if you can, you really want to grow them yourself. And they're not alone on that. There's a lot of different berries, fruit, and just food in general that doesn't ship well. So you can't find them in stores. You have to grow some things yourself to enjoy all the different varieties available. Just one of the joys of gardening. Huh, Gina? What are you doing over here, girl? I don't have any treats for you. You better not be stealing my berries. You should be eating the slugs. That's what you're here for, girl. Eat the slugs and bugs. Besides all the berries and the fruit trees, I do have a lot of mushroom growth out here. I'm not exactly sure what kind of mushrooms these are. If you're absolutely sure, then let me know in the comments down below. But we're getting a lot of mushroom growth. I spread wood chips out here every year so the mycelium growth underneath is just very plentiful. I would like to try and grow some of my own edible mushrooms at some point. I'm not entirely confident harvesting wild mushrooms, at least not all of them. But it's a sign that I'm creating some healthy soil. Now I haven't got out here with a fresh layer of wood chips yet this year because the chickens are still scratching it all up and I'm working on the other gardens first but i've been collecting wood chips over there for all the different gardens and the homestead so i will be spreading a new fresh layer whenever i get the chance but there's also going to be a lot of transplanting i want to do we have a lot of privets that popped up here and they're actually a decent size if i want to try and use them somewhere in the landscape we have a lot of valerian root that's just kind of growing wild at this point that's not really a problem but we do have some berries that i want to get moved over to the right spot i want to try and keep all the same berries kind of together so they're easier to harvest and identify and these were a couple of volunteer raspberries i need to get moved back over what are you doing bud you barking at those crows i think you're crows bud you don't have to worry about them they're friendly but yeah make yourself known good boy bud protect those birds I planted a bunch of pine berry strawberries in here. I believe half were white and half were red. They needed to cross pollinate, but I didn't really have good success with them popping up that first year. So I kind of just left it go, but it looks like some of them are popping up now and a lot of other stuff. But the chickens have been loving it out here, just doing work all season long. Huh, girls? I did put a work stop order on this garden though spot. So could you move on? Move on. Come on, I don't need any tilling over here. Beep, beep, scoot, scoot. I'd like to get this area mulched with some black mulch all the way down the driveway line to the red maple tree down there. The dark purple maple tree to some of you that don't know. It's actually a red crimson. And then we have a yellow Norway and this is a green poplar hybrid. Just some color choices here. Come on chickens, why are you crossing the road? You're supposed to stay over here. Come on ladies. Beep beep, scoot scoot. Chicken, Dot, Bonnie. Come on. Come on, let's get you all the way through this garden. I don't want you stopping here. No, 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 everybody keep going, keep going, come on, come on, there you go, there you go, go underneath the maple tree, that's good chickens, Spot, you are just ruining my edging girl, come on, green queen, Spot, beep, beep, scoot, scoot, everybody go, you can find a hole to dig in the food forest, come on, there's plenty of bugs out here for you. So we're getting some growth out of the perennials here. They haven't started blooming yet, but we're gonna have a nice season of color once the hostas and the daylilies start blooming down this line. I'd like to put some black mulch all the way across this because I don't want to use the natural wood mulch down here. I would like a little bit more contrast of color down here. But the deep red of this maple is looking really good with the deep purple of the hookra down below. I'm um, Pop, what are you looking at? Dizzy, what are you doing? Hey, you with the feathers and the crooked head, where are you going? Come on back. Come on, come on girl. You don't live down here anymore. You hatched your babies out and you moved back to the barn. You gotta stay with the, where are you going? You're not going to the shed? Where are you going? You want, it, you want us to go to the pergola now? I guess we'll take a quick second to show you the pergola. The silver lace vine is really coming in. I need to get up there and prune it all back. I haven't got to the pergola to actually clean it up for spring or summer. I wanna get the silver lace vine all the way off the ceiling of the pergola. I don't want it covering the ceiling. That's all for the gourds. The honeysuckle has been respecting the ceiling, but the silver lace vine is one of the fastest growing vines in the world. So if you give it the space, it's gonna take it. We have the pink lilies, the yellow echinacea, and the purple hostas coming up here. Another hosta. My dad, I guess, planted some dahlias back here. I don't exactly know where they are. I did start to plant some elephant ears, but I don't think I got them in the ground quick enough. He started soaking the dahlias and the elephant ear bulbs way before I was ready to plant. He didn't get them all in the ground, so I tried to get the elephant ears in the ground, but I don't think I got them in in time. Actually, I know I didn't, because it's still sitting right there, and it's not in the ground. Hi, Dizzy. What do you think about that? Gardening doesn't go as planned. Why don't you plant that for me, girl? Pull your weight. 
More hostas coming up over here by the hangar. I really like the hostas, so we have a whole line going down here. It's a nice simple plant that goes away in the winter. But on the corner I put a lilac because we do like some fragrance and color around the property, but this one isn't blooming yet. It was young when I put it in, so we haven't actually gotten the first bloom off of this one. But we have a row of these 10 hostas going down the line here. I think there's 10, I didn't actually count them. And then it ends here with a yucca on the corner and two irises up above. I believe those are yellow irises and then obviously that's going to be a white yucca. The summer chicken run over here is done. I did close it off with this branch gate. I just still ended up letting the chickens out to free range. But if you didn't see it on the other channel, I made another branch gate kind of like I did down the vegetable garden. This one's just a little bit bigger. And I think it turned out pretty well. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But underneath all the hemlocks here and the privets, this is all fenced off now for the chickens. And they still prefer destroying my gardens. But we'll head down to the vegetable garden where I have it fenced off and they can't get in. Recently we did plant some willows out in the south garden. I don't think the second one that we planted out in the triangle is going to make it. It had a really small root ball whenever we put it in there. And we actually had two really hot days after planting it. I did take a bucket of water out there to water it, but I don't think it has enough roots to suck it up for the size of tree it is. I have other trees to use. It might end up being another maple, but we're going to have to probably replace that one straight out. But the one on the east line looks a lot better, so hopefully that one's going to make it. Huh, Pop? We haven't done any work to the cut flower garden yet. The sun's really starting to come out again after we got this rain. But the cut flower garden is going to be a whole project in itself. I didn't even do anything with the outside of the vegetable garden because I know the chickens will just come in and scratch it up. Like you see with the hyacinths and the tulips. At least they left them bloom first. Come on, Pop. This gate needs some work. But here in the vegetable garden in the pollinator ring, we have a circle of the wild bell hyacinths, these purple hyacinths I have growing around the property. These are looking good going around the circle. I am going to have to prune back this butterfly bush though. It's kind of taken over my lilies that are hiding in there and even the gladiolas down below. But the group of hostas are popping up along that fence line there, filling that in nicely. And the onions and the peas that we recently got planted are all popping up, so I'm happy with that. More peas are coming up in this bed, and we've also had some asparagus that we were able to harvest. This is just a big clump of Swiss chard that perennialized and came back this year. I never pulled out the stump. That's an old stump right there, and it's just coming back right off of it. And then below the trellis along the peas that we planted here, we have some blue curled scotch kale coming back as well. That was a tongue twister. That took me three tries to say. My perennial fennel's coming back nice and strong again. I didn't plan to put perennial fennel around my raised bed like this. It just came back one year and I left it there. And fennel has a really strong smell and a lot of bugs go to it. And when the bugs are on it, they're not on my other plant, so I keep it around. Over here in the pumpkin patch, I did get the rototiller to go through it one time, almost all the way. I think the carburetor's all clogged up on that thing. What are you doing, Bobtail? Get back in here, girl. But here in the pumpkin patch, it's almost looking ready to plant in. I do want to try and go through it a couple more times if we can get the rototiller running a little better. But if not, I'm just going to go with what I have here. I'm not even really going that deep with the rototiller. I'm just trying to go through the top layer to try and bust it up and make it nice and soft. Puppy, what's that? We have some Canadian geese landing up on top of the hill. Hopefully they don't want to come down to the pond. It's taken. Seat's taken. I did finally get some prep work done on the squash mound here. I got the weeds all weed whacked down. That was getting covered in thistle. I had to bust out the metal blade to cut through that. And then all the compost I had down here that wasn't completely broken down that I didn't want to put in the raised beds, I spread across the top of the squash mound here so whenever it rains, it can kind of just drip that nutrient right into the soil. I'm not going to take it back up to the compost pile, so I figured just spreading it across here and it can leach into the top of the soil, just add nutrients to the squash mound because that's not the best soil as it is. So the more organic material I can add to it the better and I also got all the wood chips that we had dumped here spread out there is one volunteer basil that was growing here there was actually a bunch I could smell it when I was weed whacking so I left this one go it ain't gonna hurt nobody I love a volunteer we have this perennialized creeping Jenny down here but we also have a lot of different perennials around the Empress tree here I'm not gonna go through them all right now I'm just gonna show you what's blooming we have this white iris that's blooming with a yellow throat and this is the only location on the property that I have the white irises. But we do have some peonies on this side. They're getting ready to bloom here soon. Some people say peony. Some people say peony. I've heard it both ways. But just getting this mulch spread across the bottom and getting all the weeds chopped down, the compost on the top, the squash mound is looking really good right now. And the irises should be opening up and blooming here soon. So the vegetable garden down here is really starting to come together. Also the onions that we planted over here in the straight bed are coming up. So we're going to have some diversity over here once we get the other plantings in. 
And I also have some volunteer sunflowers popping up in this bed, which is really good to see. This is actually a potato growing right there. That must have been in my compost pile. But over here we have some more sunflowers popping up. I'm probably going to relocate these ones. Or I might just let them grow right here in the bed. I can see them from the patio. I love getting volunteers. But it's looking pretty good here in the vegetable garden so far. What are you doing in here? So uh, salt? You need to get out of here, girl. Dalmatian, you're on the wrong side of the fence. And you're eating what? An egg? Where'd you get that? The compost pile. Come on, girl. Get out of here. Get out of here. Scratching up all my malt, you little chicken. Echo, why don't you open the gate for her, bud? What do you think? She's just going to jump out? How'd you get in here? You jump over the doghouse or what? You had to jump in. Come here, pup. We got to herd her out, bud. Yeah, get behind her. There you go. That's a good shepherd. You silly chicken. Stay out of my gardens. Over here on the ramp bed, we're probably going to get some bloom shoots to start popping up on these irises. But so far, nothing looks any different from last garden tour. It just all looks bigger. Oh, right, pop, you getting a drink? Good boy. That beach is for you, huh? You love the beach. You're getting all sandy. As you can see, we're pretty low on the pond water here. We didn't get as much rain as I thought we were going to get or hoped we were going to get. I'm actually almost completely out of water up at the homestead with my rain harvest system, so I really need to get some rain. But you can see the fishies down there. The orange koi with the black spots is hanging out with all the goldfish. I've been seeing a bunch of frogs jump in. Even this morning I saw a giant bullfrog swimming in here. At night we can hear them croaking constantly. But you can see here in the stream section how low we are. That rock is supposed to be under 10 inches of water, almost a foot. I have a couple pots here in the stream just soaking up water. One of the next steps out here is to start adding some pond plants. I do have some floating plants in my aquarium I could probably pull out now that the freeze is pretty much over. You never know, we probably will get a late frost, but hopefully we have most of the cold temperatures behind us. The creeping jenny here on the falls is looking really good. All the bright yellow filling in the rock gaps. I would like to add more of that sedum mat that I have growing around the rocks right there though. I have it down here between the rocks too. It's just a variety of different kinds of sedums. I got it in a 10 by 20 tray at Lowe's. It was just a full mat. I got it like three years ago and I've never seen it there since. But the massive red gladiolas coming back on the mound here. Hopefully we have another beautiful show like we did last year. I think there was well over 48 blooms that came off of just that one group of gladiola. The pugster butterfly bush is coming back over there and we have the hosta right there at the end of the log as well. All the tulips and the hyacinths are pretty much done. We just have a couple more yellow ones right there. And I am going to be getting another lemongrass. That's an annual here, but I like having it here around the waterfalls. It has a really nice fragrance to it. I've been moving it so I have it on different spots here on the waterfalls. So I don't know where I'm going to put it yet this year. But I do have to dig out the dead clump from last year. What are you yelling about, mumbles? That's so funny, those two ducks just sleeping. Huh, pup? You enjoying your beach, buddy? Yeah, I thought so. But over here in the intake bay, you can see how the water's still low. It's just siphoning in here. Now, the pumps are down in these barrels, so they're still sunk under three feet of water, so they're not going to be sucking air. I have this nasty-looking towel over the hose just to keep a hole in the pipe from spraying water everywhere. I actually have the fitting in the pipe to fix that. I was actually waiting for warmer weather, and now that we have warmer weather, I'm waiting for the time available to do it. And the geyser just went off. So nice whenever you're up close to it. But right here we have some willows that I took cuttings off of my other willow trees and I just stuffed them in the pond here. I really need to get those out of there because they're probably putting in some good roots down into the bottom. Hey duck duck, do you mind if I look? Yeah, there's like a big mat of roots down there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to want to dig those up. I could probably get these willows planted out into the landscape and they'll keep growing. It can be hard sometimes. I'd like to try and time that move, moving those out into the landscape on like a couple rainy days so I don't have to keep watering them. And they'll have their best chance if it's not a couple hot days. It's more of rainy weather because they're getting all the water they want right now. Oh, pop. On the other side of this hemlock tree from the vegetable garden, we have the white corner. Not really, it's just white and purple flowers over here mainly. But we have the white dogwood that's blooming beautifully right now. This is its 
biggest bloom that it's ever had. This is its seventh year in the ground over here and it's finally blooming beautifully. This did start blooming first, but coming up right behind it, really bright, is the white azalea and it's putting on a lot of flowers this year. Last year I think it got a little frosted, but it's doing really well right now and we don't have any frost in the forecast. Just a beautiful show of flowers right now. Now from them, around this stone pine, we have another little grouping here. I have a variegated grouping. It's a variegated hostas here with the white edges, and then we have variegated Solomon seal here in the center. This Solomon seal is actually blooming right now with some white little bell flowers hanging down. Just a beautiful little collection of flowers. It looks like the Solomon seal is getting bigger quicker than the hostas, but I have a drift of the hostas wrapping around the Solomon seal here, so we're gonna have to see how they mature. Now the chickens did do some scratch work over here next to the lamb's ear, but this is coming up looking nice and soft, and it is soft. That's why they call it lamb's ear. Maybe I should get a lamb. Why'd you just fall in a hole? Is that a fence post hole, buddy? We do got to get the fence back up on this side. We took it down whenever the sister maple to this one fell over and crushed half of it. And now it's been down for the last few years. We have a bunch of day lilies here popping up. They're replacing what was a big line of daffodils along here. And it looks like we're starting to get some buds, even the first couple blooms here on the scotch broom. This plant kind of has a unique structure of bloom. We used to have another one on the other side, but it died whenever we lost that maple tree too. The Gila boards are just leaving on their little seed pods here that still look like blooms. Looking gorgeous. Really extends the season for that plant. I have a few sedum pups here that jumped off the mama plant that I could probably move around. That's what's fun about perennials, they just keep multiplying. And as you can see here next to the stone, we have another single purple bell hyacinth just looking beautiful in full bloom. Just adding that little spot of color that's needed. And not too much going on right now with blooms, just a lot of perennials starting to come out of the ground and establish. Up, pop. Am I taking too long? You ready for belly rubs, aren't you? Yeah. Always waiting on me, aren't you, pup? Yeah. So from this angle, the hosta bed's looking really good as the sun starts to set. Coming around the front corner of the house, we have the hosta bed we're gonna get to. We have a hosta right here on the tongue. This one has some darker green, almost blue edges to it. If you know what the name of this is, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. I get a lot of these hostas from friends gardens, so I don't actually buy them from stores to get an actual name tag on them. This one, you can also see the damage it took from the frost the other day. Right behind it, we have a purple passion rhododendron, and the first bloom is just starting to open. This is one of my favorite colors of rhododendrons for sure. Some more of these bright green hostas I put in this shady area just to add a lot of light and color. And right beside them is a bright pink rhododendron. This is a Holden rhododendron. It's not gonna get very big, but it has a very vibrant color. And now up here where Echo Pup is laying, we have the hosta bed. This is where I'm just growing out different varieties of hosta. This is the north side of the house, so hostas do really well over here. They don't get baked out in the sun. They get mostly afternoon shade and morning and evening sun. So the front line here is variegated hostas with white edges. Right behind that is another Empress Wu hosta like we saw in the island garden. And then beside that one, these ones I did actually buy. These were just such a bright color. I wanted these in the garden, so I'm growing them out, trying to get them to get big enough I can split around. I have a little pollinator bath right here that they can get a drink while they're pollinating some flowers, even though we don't have any flowers on these yet. Behind that, we have a native fern that I dug up out of the woods at my brother's house, and another hosta right here. I think this is just a green hosta, though. Nothing wrong with green hostas, though. We have some more variegated hostas over here, and this one's a green one. I believe this one's a green one. And that one has that dark green or bluish strip to it. It's just a grow out bed right now, but it is getting pretty full. I'm going to be able to spread those around the property. Now over here towards the front, we do have the red azalea coming into bloom. And it's looking gorgeous. But right ahead of it, we have the dianthus right here that has a nice pink bloom to it. I believe this is the bubblegum dianthus. And there is so many buds on that. That is going to be a blanket of color. And same with this red azalea. I think it's actually going to be in full bloom tomorrow. Too bad today is the end of April. This is just such a vibrant red. Gorgeous. I did have fresh black mulch down here, but the thistle kind of took over, and you can see all the purple viola that took over as a ground cover blooming that little purple flower. But purple and red goes well together. Now on the right side of the waterfalls, we typically have a massive purple lupin blooming gorgeously all spring and into summer. But as you can see, the lupin is not that big this year, and that's because lupin is actually a plant that only survives about four years. It has a nice bloom cycle into its third and fourth year, and then it completely dies back. So these are actually volunteers that were growing underneath that massive plant. 
The water droplets on the leaves are still beautiful though. But even though this one's tiny, it's still gonna put off one big bloom. Now this reseeded pretty good, so you can see behind it that we have a couple other smaller ones that are growing up. And even over here I saw one growing up. It has a really identifiable leaf. And it's even holding a water droplet at that small size. So I'm definitely gonna wanna keep those ones going. Oh, the geyser. Below that purple lupin though, we have this group of sunflower volunteers. I'm gonna wanna dig up and try and get these roots separated before they get too intertwined together. I'm pretty sure that's volunteering from kind of a smaller sunflower that I had planted here, so that'll be nice to have here on the bank. We have some of the purple triangularis that's perennial here popping up all through this area. Some volunteer Chinese forget-me-not right here and another lupin volunteer popping up right there. One more yellow tulip on its last leg. And then above the succulent patch here behind the cold frame, we have some purple columbine growing up. These are the ones that I actually planted. I had three of them. I planted three small roots here and they keep multiplying, so I just keep moving them away from this spot. But they're looking beautiful up here and they're not taking up too much space here on the pond bank. On this side, you can see all the purple periwinkle vine blooming and it blends in perfect with the purple columbine. And with that lupin doing so well on the bank there, spreading its seed around, it blew some seeds over here to the poppy bed, and another volunteer popped up a few years ago, so this one's actually gonna put on a really nice show. I think it's three years old now. This one's just over 24 inches high right now, and it's putting on a few different bloom stalks. This is definitely one of my favorite plants here in the gardens. This area is really starting to fill out nicely underneath the nine bark. The nine bark is coming back pretty good, more than I thought it was going to after its heavy pruning this year. My mom wants to switch this out for a different plant. She doesn't really like the nine bark. She wants something else that's gonna cover up the burner and give a little bit of privacy or hide that burner a little better. But we're gonna have to wait till fall to pull this out because all the lilies and the hostas are already up and established in there and we're not gonna be able to pull this nine bark out. We could just cut it out of there, but then we wanna be able to replant something in its place. The daffodils are done so the hostas and the daylilies are really starting to fill in the space here. And we have this volunteer maple tree popping up I really need to get out of there. That's just wasting root space. Speaking of wasted space we have this giant burdock down here that needs pulled out. I think that's burdock. But right now the gardens are weedy and they're not fully mulched but there's still a lot of nice things to see out there. Huh pop. You heard me. But that's going to be all for this one. I just want to take a quick stroll around the garden and show you what's blooming right now. We've been getting a lot of nice weather, so a lot of things have been growing. And I like to bring you along and show you the whole progression of the gardens throughout the season. If you want to keep following along, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit that like button before you leave, and you can see me and Echo on the next one. Thanks for watching.